the tangible assets note. Now that you are comfortable with recording the sale of dis or disposal of assets and the depreciation that you need to calculate, we can now look at how these will appear in the Statement of Financial Position notes. As before, your tangible assets note needs to show the beginning and end values of the assets, just like you have to do for owner's equity. Remember that all your other asset notes are simply a list of all the items that you have to include. It is only owner's equity and tangible assets which need to show all the movements. So, to show how you got from the beginning to the end value, you will need to show the changes during the year. This could include additions. By additions, I mean the purchase of any new assets. You will also show your depreciation here. In other words, the value that has been used up by the asset during the period, or the expense relating to the asset that you've written off. And lastly, the disposals, which you have just learned how to do. Keep in mind that your tangible assets note will represent your general ledger accounts for both the tangible asset itself, be that land and buildings, vehicles or equipment, as well as the accumulated depreciation on those vehicles or on the equipment. If you can remember this, and you are sure to use all the figures that you used in these general ledger accounts, you won't go wrong. If you do not have to draw up the general ledger, please make use of rough T accounts. If you are not already familiar with them and comfortable with using these clever, clever tools, please start using them now. Although some transactions might be very simple to record, usually your tangible assets question involves a number of complicated aspects and the easiest way to understand them is to show them for yourselves in a rough T account. This is what your tangible assets note is going to look like. Obviously you will need to show different columns for the different assets and then total them up. That is very easy to do, so I am going to focus on how we draw the beginning, the middle and the end. If you can remember that we are working with beginning, middle and end, as shown here, it will not be so hard. Keep in mind also that we want to show everything at the carrying value. Remember that the carrying value is what we think the items are actually worth, and so these are the figures that you will need to include on your statement of financial position. The final carrying value at the end of the year, shown over here, is the most important amount, as that is the amount that you will show on the Statement of Financial Position for Tangible Assets. Now that you understand the basic structure, look at how we will calculate our carrying value at the beginning of the year. Remember that carrying value is always made up of cost less accumulated depreciation. If you have a look at these general ledger accounts, you can simply take your balance brought down at the beginning for each and use these over here. For the end, you will do exactly the same thing. The only difference is that you will use your ending balances or your balance brought down at the end of the year to the following year. We then need to consider the movements, in other words, how everything changed. Given the fact that our beginning and end balances are at carrying value, we will also need to show all our movements at carrying value. Additions are shown at cost simply because the carrying value is the cost. There's no depreciation when you buy the item. Disposals are shown at carrying value. In other words, you need to calculate the cost of the sold item less the accumulated depreciation at the time of sale. Don't forget to include the depreciation for the current period in this calculation. The depreciation that you will show over here is the total depreciation for the period. Keep in mind that this will include your depreciation calculated on your sold item as well as the depreciation calculated at the end of the financial year on both the old items and the new items. 
I know it feels rather strange to be factoring in the depreciation on the sold item for the current year when it feels as if you've already used it in carrying value. But in actual fact, they are used in different ways, and it is very important that you show them in both places. If you consider your accumulated depreciation T account or general ledger account, you can keep in mind that you will record the depreciation on the credit side, but then you will also use it on the debit side when you take it out to asset disposal. This is why you will use both of these figures. Another hint is that when you are calculating disposals at carrying value, as we said, it's cost minus accumulated depreciation. But what does this really mean for you? If you are looking at your cost account and your accumulated depreciation account, it is the amounts that are sent out to asset disposal in both of these. Let's have a look at 5.12 example. In the information, you can see our equipment account is given and the accumulated depreciation on equipment. This example is being used directly from the general ledger account so that you can see how it will help you to draw the tangible assets note. As I said before, if you are not given the general ledger account, please draw up T accounts. All the entries in these accounts you are perfectly capable of recording yourself from any information that is given. The equipment balance at the beginning of the year is 300 Rand. So this is used at the beginning of the note as cost. You can clearly see 300 Rand. In accumulated depreciation, the balance brought down is 150. So we show that at the beginning as the accumulated depreciation of 150. Notice, however, that we show the amount in brackets, as it is very important to remember to subtract it from the cost account. Beware, if you don't show the brackets, you may well lose marks here. The next piece of information that we are given is the middle. If you look in equipment, you can see an entry of bank 200 Rand. This indicates that equipment was bought for 200 Rand. In other words, this is the new equipment bought this year. We will show this in our movements as additions at cost of 200 Rand. Moving on, we can see that something must have been sold, as in both equipment and accumulated depreciation on equipment, a figure have figures of 155 Rand respectively have been transferred out to the asset disposal account. This means that the cost of the sold item was 100 and the total depreciation up until the date of sale was 55. Using these two figures, you can calculate the carrying value of the sold item as 45 Rand. Because we've sold it, it means that the value of our assets has decreased and we therefore need to show it in brackets. The last part of the movements is the depreciation. Notice, as I mentioned before, you are going to include both the depreciation on the sold item calculated during the year, as well as on the old and new items that were calculated at the end of the year. You will usually see both of these entries in your accumulated depreciation account, so all you need to do is add them together. 5 plus 30 gives you total depreciation for the period of 35 Rand. Again, it is reducing the value of the assets and so you need to show it in brackets. Just like with the accumulated depreciation at the beginning, if you forget to show your brackets, you will lose marks. We can then take the end balances for both equipment 400 Rand and accumulated depreciation 130 Rand and show these at the end. Once you've done this, you can check that your tangible assets note is correct. If you work down from the value at the beginning of the year of 150, you add 200 and subtract both the 45 and the 35, you will obviously come across the end value of 270. This can be checked 
by working out the carrying value by using the balances at the end of the year of 400 minus 130, which does also equal 270. Although if your tangible assets note is working, it doesn't mean everything is perfectly correct, I can tell you that if it doesn't work out, you have definitely got something wrong. Because what it means is that you have not used all the figures that you are supposed to, or perhaps you've put something in that you should not have. If you have a look at your general ledger accounts here, do you see that there are no figures that have not been used? Everything has been taken into account. You can now finish the chapter by working through the rest of the exercises to consolidate your knowledge. As always, please make sure that you mark each exercise as you complete it before moving on to the next. This is also a section where it might be very wise to start doing your mistakes pages if you haven't already. In other words, as you mark an exercise and learn about your mistakes you have made, write on a piece of paper what you need to do differently next time. In other words, like little crib notes for yourself. Before you start the next exercise, work through these notes. You are much less likely to make the same mistakes again. Although it is more time consuming, you will certainly learn a lot faster.